Hello guys, um, Mike's here through the phone today. What's up guys? So today for Sports BS, we're going to, we're going to talk, a lot has happened in the world of sports. Yo, it it's, sucks, it's freaking lame, yeah. no sports, but I'm not going to complain, I'm just going to talk about it, I'm not going to complain, I promise, it's going to be sweet. So, first, let's. Originally, for this episode, we were just going to talk about the XFL. So, before we get all the coronavirus shit, let's talk about our thoughts on the XFL. Um, Yo, this video's already been ruined, demonetized, scrubbed from the internet, just because you just said the word. The word? <laughs> the one the word. word? The C word. Oh my god. It's a bad word. Well, it is the what Bud it is. Virus. The Budweiser virus. The Budweiser, jeez. The blue virus, if you call it something else, then people still know what you're talking about. I think the technical <laughs> name is CD19 or something like that. CDB or something. I don't know COVID how... 19 whatever. Who gives a fuck? The yeah. point is, this video's ruined, so just say whatever you want now. Uh, but yeah, so... Anyway. <laughs> so, Mike... Have you have you caught? You said you haven't saw any games, but you said you were gonna watch some highlight vids. What do you think? What do you think of the XFL? Well, bro, I think it's is great. Just because there's so many players that just get trashed by the NFL for no reason, and they're actually good players. You you can find a lot of players that were NFL rejects in the XFL, yeah. so I think it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's um. What do you think of like? Did you catch any of the rule changes or the cool presentation ideas they showed? Did you catch any of that through the highlight videos you watched? Not all of it, but what, what are some of the things you were thinking of? Like, which things? Well, here's some rules. Like, the kickoff format. Did you catch that? So, it's not the normal kickoff, I noticed. Yes. Basically, it's like, um... Pretty much the return team and the front team, they're all like lined up against each other like in like a scrimmage. And the only and the kicker's in the back and the return man's in the back. And when the return man catches the ball, that's when the play is snapped. That's when it's live, when he grasps the ball. So Yeah, so the people don't get that head start. It's probably better for concussion protocol because it, people aren't it is. Charging head first as soon as they kick the ball. And re gives and the, the yeah. defensive team more time to move. And the return team actually gets to return it. <laughs> they actually do return it beyond the 20 yard line. And there's actually very strict penalties on kicking it out of bounds or in the end zone. Like, you have to kick it a certain way to get a proper touchback. Otherwise, you're giving your the team great field position. I think that's pretty good, just because the NFL has a lot of annoying kickoffs, like, years ago when they took it from the, the 30 instead of the 35, there used to be a lot more kickoff return touchdowns and, yeah. you know, punt returns and stuff like that for a touchdown, but they don't have it that much anymore. Here's the thing. Here's something you I, you might chuckle at. If the, t if the kickoff team kicks it out of bounds, even outside the end zone, the return team gets it at the opposing team's 40. The opposing team's 40 is so close. Like, that's crazy, but... Yeah. Yeah, uh, another... Don't kick it out of bounds, it won't happen. Yeah, another rule change is the point after attempt. So there's no PAT kicks. Everything is a play. And you have three choices. You can attempt one point from the two-yard line, two points from the five, and then three from the ten. And it, if the defense gets the ball through a fumble or interception and returns it, they get the points that they were attempting. Okay. So, and it's not easy. Even with a one-point attempt, It is there is challenge to it. It's not guaranteed. There's no guarantees with it. It's purely extra credit, in all honesty. So you... Don't even have to kick an extra point? No kicking extra points. You only kick field goals. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, uh, what's some other stuff? Um, trying to think. Um, uh, the presentation's awesome because, because the announcers, they're not, they're not, they're good, but the key is they, other people talk too, like, they, 
they they put on players and coaches live while the game is going on so we hear the coaches and players they're they're what they're saying and what stuff they're planning yeah, while the play instead of Chris Carroll's work just saying I love this guy man <laughs> this guy right here yeah. he did some things and he did those things and yeah pretty good player yeah, him fucking just fucking the worst commentary I've ever heard. Please stop. Just him <laughs> stroking his own ego. But it's literally uh, him saying general knowledge about the player and saying I love this player. Oh yeah, it's times. it's the complete opposite. And he doesn't even do it before the game. He usually just does it yeah. as soon as that player makes a play. Obviously, you think they're a good player as soon as they make a play, but that's yeah. stupid, dude. You should actually know who the good players are, Collinsworth. Yeah. Instead and of just waiting to, like, comment on something, like a fucking reacting goon. And another cool thing is, um, when a big play happens, like, there's reporters on the silent that will interview the player or players that were involved in that play right after the play during the game. So, yeah. we get to hear, and it, it, it's, it's, I love it because you get to learn, learn more about these players and you can develop kind of a likeness towards them and instead of being so freaking anonymous, you yeah, know. Yeah, dude, I would much rather listen to the actual players than Chris Collinsworth. The yeah. only reason Chris Collinsworth has a job is because he was a player and he couldn't get a job as a coach, probably. No, but because he, he kept because he kept hanging out a little too long in the locker room. <laughs> He wasn't that good a player. Yeah. I'd rather listen to better players than him, especially when he's like talking about that team strategy or yeah. how that player is operating. Like he doesn't know what they're doing. He's guessing. Yeah, and that's he's a guessing. And that's... He's literally just guessing based on mm -hmm. which play is good, which player does good each play, and he picks that player to talk about. It's fucking easy as fuck. <laughs> And that's kind of worse, a dip. It's and there's kind of stupid. and there's no real guessing because they show almost you you pretty much hear what's going on. In fact, here's something you might love when when a play when a play is reviewed, um, and they do that a lot of automatic reviews. We see the process of review. We see the ref talk to the people in the booth and then and hear them and see them talk through the play and see it see the conclusion they come up with and how they came up with it instead of like being hid behind the shadows because god forbid we should know what the refs <laughs> say about the play <laughs> yeah so i can definitely support that change that is a good idea yeah and the thing is arena football did that too well before all this and i'm glad to see xfl adopt it um uh, what's some other stuff? Um, there's some other things, but I can't think of them. There's a, a double pass. They allow that, which is pretty much you can pass forward twice if, along it's behind the line of scrimmage. It's I haven't really I, seen it done. I don't really know how it quite works. But So, you're saying you can do it behind the line of scrimmage. You can't do it ahead of the line of scrimmage. I think. I haven't... I, it's been done in the XFL, but I haven't really quite seen it. It's it's a little bit of a fancier trick play kind of thing. Yeah, what I want to know based on that is, can you throw it to a guy who's in front of the line, have him step back behind the line after he catches it, and then throw it again? Maybe. That could be it. I, I, I'm sure if you look it up on YouTube, you could probably see, because it has been done in the XFL successfully. They did say that, so I, I think you'll be able to find that. But, but yeah. there. you want me to look it up right now? Um, 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 you could. You could. Um, if you want, if you, if you felt it. Um, yeah, so, I mean... That sounds like it's pretty cool, and it's probably entertaining, but is it, like, a practical play? No, it's just... Probably not. No, yeah. it's just it's just an extra freedom, you know? It's just an extra oomph. And the games are shorter, like, quite a bit. Like, the play clock is a lot shorter. Like, it's 25-second play clock, and... Yo, I found the, the play, though. Oh, okay, go ahead and take a look at that. I'm curious on your thoughts. I didn't even 
didn't see it. Like, I'm gonna have to watch it again. Yeah. It, look, it didn't even look like a double forward pass. It looked like just a regular... Yeah, I think... No, I, I get it. So, he did the flip forward, which counts as a pass, but really, it's just... It's just like the shortest, easiest pass, but it's really like a handoff. Yeah, it's... I think... I don't think they did it to an extreme yet. I think they kind of just did the most basic way to do it. Um, yeah, and it says that was the first attempt, so yeah. I get it. Yeah, and, uh, what else? Um, oh yeah, and... I don't think he can go ahead of the line of scrimmage. I think he had to stay behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, yeah. But, um, what was another thing? Oh yeah, the play clocks are shorter. 25 second play clocks. And the clock is... It continues running. It doesn't... It doesn't stop during the game until the... When it gets to the two minute warning, that's when things change. When it gets to the two minute warning, the ball's... The clock, the clock stops when the ball, the ball is tackled on the field of play, until, and then there's a five second runoff during the play clock, and then the clock starts running again with 20 seconds on the play clock. It's a bit wordy, but a lo- but it, when you wa- see them play, it makes a lot of sense. And so they they were just going for quicker games, right? Yeah, quicker games more give teams more chances to score. Um, yeah, a game I haven't seen an overtime game. I don't think they had one yet, but but usually games get done within three hours, and that includes like commercials and everything. Like about a half hour, forty five minutes shorter than an than a usual NFL game. So, so yeah, and another thing is the frickin' players play with such abandoned aggression that even, even though there's a lot of offense, like, through scoring and yardage and stuff, you see a lot of defense, too. Like, early on in the year, at the very least, there was a huge chunk of great defense going on. It, it still, it still did. It's just, yeah, and it's very, it's, Despite a lot of a lot of big plays and a lot of a lot of intensity, but yeah, uh, intensity. Yeah, it's yeah. Me, yeah. <laughs> me and my dad watched so many games of the XFL. I think we watched more XFL stuff, and I think in a in like a five week span than we ever did with football. <laughs> Outside the Lions, really. So, yeah, it's it's a very it's a very fun league, it, and it is coming back. In fact, they are since they got canceled, they are actually deciding to move ahead with expansion early. And on the 19th on Twitter, they're allowing a poll to happen to see what people would like to see a team expand into what city. I heard they're kind of favoring Atlanta and Chicago, which Chicago will make a lot of sense because there's not really a team in this area. The closest is St. Louis, which is like so far off. So, so we might see a team come close by here pretty soon. That's kind of crazy, though. Yeah, I, yeah, it. I love it. I I can't wait for it to actually become a thing. Like 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 they're saying it won't compete with the NFL, but I think if they play their cards right, I can see one day in the future where they could kind of start stepping on NFL's toes. Yeah, the NFL. I mean, people are always gonna want an NFL, but at the same time, people always want something else. So. Yeah, it's, yeah, NFL to me is just, it, did you hear they're expanding the NFL season to 17 games? Yeah. And the play, and they're extending the playoffs by allowing two more teams to go into the playoffs, so it's like seven teams a conference instead of six. I mean, I think that's okay, but at the same time, it just fucks it up, and, you know, it's just another change that seems kind of dumb. 
Yeah, they're doing. They're and the thing is, I I only thought they could they should expand if they added more teams, but yeah, I don't know why they expand the playoffs without much happening really. Because the thing is that yeah, because because you're they were already facing issues a couple years of team uh, there because there's been a few years where teams that were like eight eight seven nine made the playoffs and teams that were ten and six didn't just based on the division lineup. So, I mean, this in one way this does remedy it, but at the other hand it's like like why it it's it's not a perfect system. In all honesty, I kind of wish they realigned the whole league. Even a, mix the AFC and NFC, NFC teams just to make divisions that make more sense, you know? And cuz some of it's kind of ludicrous how they have everything divided up. Um, but yeah, uh, but yeah. So now let's get to the big thing at hand here. So so many leagues canceled. <laughs> so let's see. All right. So Mike, do you th- uh, with all the leagues canceled, do you see any of them coming back to finishing to finish the season? I don't know, man. Like, it's just kind of one of those weird things, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's I, just, it's not really something people know about. Yeah. They, they, lots of people have opinions, but I think nobody really knows for sure. Yeah, I did hear NBA does plan on coming back in late June to finish a shortened season, late season thing. Um, I do know baseball will come back for sure because they just started, so they got plenty of time to do a season. Um, hockey though, that's still a toss up. No one quite knows about hockey. Hockey, yeah. hockey was getting close to wrap things up too, so it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. Um, XFL said XFL claims they're suspend the season suspended, but there's a few minority voices that still believe that they still could resume their season to a oh, short yeah, degree. I, mean, I have no idea. I, I don't know about any of these leagues, but I hope it it works itself out so that it's not a very long time. Yeah, yeah. I. Oh, and the college stuff is gone, too. All March Madness is gone, all the high school sports. It's like everything's gone. And oh, yeah, it's kind of crazy, man. It's kind of one of those things, but yeah. just, you know. So, let's say the seasons don't finish. Who do you think, let's say, for let's start with, like, the NBA, for example. Who do you think would have won the title in the NBA if, <sighs> if, if they finished? Probably the Lakers or the Clippers or something. Mm-hmm. Well, how about, uh, how about hockey? I don't know, man. Uh, I really don't know hockey that well, but maybe the Capitals again. Fuck it. Yeah. Repeat. Yeah, that would make sense. I and uh and yeah, I the one I would this does bring up a point in my head though is the fact that it it makes me wonder would NBA and NHL would they be in baseball too? Would all three of them would they be better off with shorter seasons? Because Basketball and hockey, they have seasons in 80-ish games, and ba- baseball has 162, but it's like, do we really want that many games in a yeah, season? Yeah, honestly, I think all of those would be better with less games. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong, the games are fun, but there's already so many, dude. Yeah, like, um, like, I think with baseball, I would like to see them shorten that to maybe, like, 162. Let's, let's try... Maybe like 120, 100 to 120. For basketball and hockey, they're very similar in their schedule format. I I think they could do 40 to 60 games, I think would be better. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. Yeah, because in all... 
just 80 and 162. It's like, no one watch. I mean, it's not like football. Because the cool part about football, it's a short season, but every game matters. You can pay attention. You can put your put yourself into that. But with the other sports, it's like, especially baseball. Hockey and basketball, I could I could see people maintaining that to a degree, but... But yeah, but yeah, I I do hope I do hope that all the leagues resume. And soccer even got delayed too, Major League Soccer. So it's it's crazy. I would like to see all of them resume at some point, though. It would be interesting to see like how this impacts those sports in the long term, because even the NFL is facing some some impact because their draft is going to get delayed, and they can't do it in Las Vegas like they planned on doing it. So it's all it's it's affecting all the sports stuff. So it'll be interesting to see in the future how they get affected in that. And maybe it might make some permanent changes even. Maybe we'll see shorter seasons in the long run. Maybe we won't. Maybe it'll be a one and done thing. Same game 
on two game gets two channels and a watch. Yeah, it, it's great. You gotta you gotta have consistency. Yeah, it's two game on two channels, and I miss the one I want. That's retarded. You don't need to watch it. I'm channel's good. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, it's just not very good. <laughs> it's I don't get how the the sports shows get so mismanaged like they do, especially Sports Center with all that. Cause it's ESPN, you know. It's the they call themselves the worldwide leader of sports. I'm just like, then show us some fucking sports. <laughs> yeah, you know what I think it is. I think they just get too emotional about teams and players that they like. And they don't have the same standard when they talk about one thing and they talk about another thing. Well, and and the biggest thing is balance. They need balance. They're too, they're too this side and that side. They need a balanced, focused thing of doing it. News-wise, they don't need like during the day. They just need one news airing. They don't need to show the same news shit over and over again. Have other programs. Have some sports documentaries. Have some retro game stuff. Maybe maybe a talk show. Maybe. <laughs> if they're good enough. I mean, one they don't like the talk shows. It's just they fucking do the same topics over and over and half the topics aren't even important and people don't even want to hear those topics they want to hear something else well yeah because they do the problem is they do the talk shows daily and it's like you don't need to do them daily you should do them once a week a week a week in this sports okay you don't need just let the week go by let sports topics gather up so when you do talk about them it's fresh and diverse and not just regurgitated shit non-stop yeah there are, there are some that could be daily but they just would have to be shorter shows and they should be like half hour instead of yeah. one hour and they should talk about newer topics and different stuff but listen to this did you hear the freaking trade with DeAndre Hopkins oh yeah yeah <laughs> in, Madden, in Madden they won't accept it well in 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 that in the trade well in all honesty Madden's Madden's shitty anyway so they don't have any credibility in with Accepting or not accepting trades. I mean, I just think it's funny though. Like, yeah. The same people who tell me Madden's good will also like tell me this is a good trade, but Madden doesn't even say it's a good trade. So like, they're kind of being hypocritical. Yeah. They're saying the game's good, but when I say the game says the trade isn't good, they still say the trade is good. Well, which is it? Is the game right and the trade's good, or fucking? It's not good, and the game's wrong. You can't have it both ways. Yeah. Do you think it's a good trade? I don't know. I mean, honestly, for which team? Because the well, way I see it, anytime you trade less players for more players, you, it seems like you're getting a better deal. Yeah, I think the trade was one it player was, in two draft picks. No, it was freaking Johnson for Hopkins. Yes. And then they swapped picks, so... Yes. Yeah, the that's... Texans gave up a fourth, and then the Cardinals gave up a second and a fourth. So the three players, and the Cardinals got two. Oh. I think the Texans did better. Yeah, because the thing... Well, the... The thing is that, cause what the benefit with the Cardinals is that now they got another weapon for their quarterback to pair with uh, two seasons left Fitzgerald, <laughs> um, and and the Texans, cause arguably Texans have a more well-balanced quarterback than Cardinals do, and they the Texans get themselves a running game, and while they did lose a big receiving threat, they got a good quarterback that can make use of really anyone. They they just need good receivers, and they're fine. I mean... I, I don't like to speculate that much, because number one, I don't know how their quote-unquote rookie players are going to play the next time they play, yeah. if they do, because this virus thing. But also, I will never advise going 
going for that kind of trade for that more players to get less players trade you know I mean it may or may not work out but overall see that I'm gonna think man the team with the less players got a better deal well the the issue is the problem is running backs in the NFL now they're not a hot commodity anymore they're kind of lesser the idea is that is that when the reason why it wasn't like even is because a young receiver is worth a whole lot more than a young running back because in their I eyes mean, yeah yeah you can argue that a little bit but honestly I still think that that extra draft pick just makes it not worth it for the freaking Cardinals. I think the Cardinals made a mistake. I really do. Yeah, yeah. The that's the thing. It's kind of hard to to find fault with them because I understand that Fitzgerald is going to be gone, and you want a young guy to pair with your young quarterback. I get that, but but you gave up not only two draft picks, you gave up a great running back. And a great running game is a young quarterback's best friend. I mean, I mean they'll make the case, oh, we'll replace him with someone else easy. I'm like, Lions have been saying that for years. <laughs> it hasn't quite helped them. So don't underestimate the power of a great, consistent running back, in my opinion. That'd be... Do you think that David Johnson is that, though? Yeah, he... You said earlier that... You know, running backs are not what they used to be. True, but David Johnson, in my opinion, has proven that he can be relied on because not only was he consistent with the Cardinals, I don't know how often he got hurt, but I think he played more than got hurt, is my guess. But he showed that he can, he, like I said, can be relied on. And Texans are arguably a much better team right now than the Cardinals, so he get, he'll be treated right in that area, and plus, and plus, since they got a, an experienced, well-made quarterback there, they don't, he doesn't have to carry the team, they can certainly pass and run 50-50-ish, and they don't have to, ma to ground and pound him into oblivion, not like the Cardinals with their, with the way they were at. But of course, I'm thinking about it, but it, it sounds better. But I don't know. I'm still on the fence. I I yeah. say give it some more time. Yeah, it's a smart move. It's not a flashy move. That's that's kind of the thing with it. Cardinals went with flash. Texans went with smarts. I think that's what they kind of went with. And plus, I've heard that Hawkins was starting to not get along with the coaching staff there. So I think they trade him because of that, to, as well. Yeah, you, you hate to see that, especially if that is one of your good players, and you don't want to lose him. Yeah, it happens. Got to move on sometimes. Yeah, hopefully though. Why well, I'm interested in seeing is how the Lions do in this draft, because this is their make it or break it year. If they if they fuck up again, they're done. They're I mean not done, but like. They're they're gonna get rid of their coach. <laughs> He's gone if he if he doesn't if he doesn't get them a winning record. If he doesn't show he's making progress, he's done. Cause, cause they're not gonna tolerate no more BS. Yeah, I mean people aren't patient anymore. So yeah, uh, I mean, geez, I mean, I hear some teams they'll fire their coach within a year, like you know the Browns. And because they didn't win, and it's just like you gotta give them more than one year to turn the team around, especially if it's a team like the Browns or the Lions that cornerstone the market on losing. <laughs> so, but yeah, Patricia has plenty had plenty of time. He this is his last chance. After this, they need to get rid of him and find someone else. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, but I don't know what they're going to do with Stafford. I keep hearing they're going to get rid of him, but I think that'd be a mistake. I think they need to keep Stafford. He's he's the guy holding the team together. He's the guy everyone's yeah, going to rely he's on. he's held it down so well. And the thing, and the thing here's, the, here's the, the good part. He wants to be there. He doesn't want to leave. He wants to win in Detroit. And trust me, there's not going to be a lot of players that can say that. <laughs> Especially quarterbacks. And... 
you're not going to get someone as good as Stafford at this point. I mean, because they, and what they, but yeah, I think if they're going to be better, I think they need to get a D line then. Mm, that might be good. Yeah, because their back seven's fine for the most part. But the front four killed them because they couldn't put anything on the opposing quarterbacks. One of those things, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, I think we covered just about everything. I can't think of anything else because there's not really any new update stuff. Cause yeah, most there's not a lot of sports stuff going on. Yeah, most sports, because they, they've been put on hold. I mean, basketball and hockey playoff time starting soon. I don't know which team was going to be on the edge except for the teams you mentioned earlier. Baseball, they're just starting up, so it's a complete toss-up. I hope the Tigers do better this year. I feel like they will, but it's hard to say. Um, you never know, man. Anything could happen. Yeah. XFL, I don't I don't think they're going to return this year, but there's still hope. I, if they if they do decide to come back, it'll probably be shorter than... Because we're going to do a 10-game season, and then four playoff teams. But they might they might shorten that and make the playoffs just a simple because it's only two divisions and make it a simple championship game thing. But I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see on all that. Every day is a new adventure <laughs> for this for this time period. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think I think that's about it. Um, I think I don't know what our next episode's topic will be. I think. I think once sports start up again and they start getting more things, shit starts happening, we may do we may do another one, but I don't know. It, we don't know how long it will take, so we're just playing it by ear on that. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up here. Any final thoughts, Mike, on anything? Not right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, we'll see you guys next time. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, please subscribe and like the videos, and have a good day. Have a good day.